after you left the summit, uh, obviously you took some of the information mm -hmm. back, and I think this is kind of the critical part of, of this whole story is that, you know, you realized that with the current model there was something wrong, um, mm -hmm. but yet you can't just go back and say, hey, you know, we're completely going to change the way we do marketing. Um, so, so the first step that you took was really to challenge the current model, right? Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about a little bit first about how that, what that model looked like um, sure. and let the audience know of kind of how the processes were and then, and then we'll talk about a little bit about how you can, were able to come in and, and kind of make some changes without really rocking the boat, so to speak, mm -hmm. in those channels. I did try the iron fist method and it failed miserably. So, um, but just to start out, like Ben was saying, the process that was in place um, really was very um, single-threaded, very sequential. The agency partners would typically go out, build some creative, and the creatives look suspiciously look like snapshots of landing pages. I'm sure you guys have learned a lot about that over the past few days. So, um, with that, once the agency would build that creative, um, they would bring it back to the uh, marketing managers. And once the marketing managers saw the, um, I think it's the next, um, once they saw the, um, the creative, they would make a few tweaks to it. You know, typically it would be maybe an image or some verbiage or something like that. And then right after that, uh, we would push the email out. And so this is basically how we operated for several years. So is that, are there other people in the room that kind of go through this similar process right now where they don't really have much influence and as to what the creatives look like, like what is being pushed out, just a show of hands maybe. So quite a few people. Yep. Um, so Tom, and again, the challenge is really, you can't just go in and say, hey, you know, it's not working, you know, let's right. change this completely. Um, but what you did instead is really say, hey, we have this creative, let me just do a few tweaks and run a test. Yep. And so you set up this test, uh, fairly simple, and I'll let you walk uh, through that test in just a second. Um, but this is the control page that was being sent out when, when you came back, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this particular email was intended uh, to kind of uh, push out a promotional offer of $400. Um, and it went out to a list of 700,000, um, including hand raisers, recent purchasers, and so on. Um, is anyone here in the audience, you've already seen Flint's session, if you were to be presented with this email, what kind of things would you, would you change about this, this particular email? Keep in mind that the goal was to get consumers to go to a landing page to download a rebate coupon. That's it. Anyone have any ideas? Less buttons? Get rid of the bottom part? Change the headline, is that what it was? The button text? Cool. So, Tom, why don't you walk them through uh, some of the changes that you were actually uh, making to this page or well, th email, sorry. Yep. So, <clears throat> this was literally a few days after the summit, and we only had a few days to make this change. And you have to understand there's some deeply ingrained um, history with the way we used to build these emails with the marketing managers and the agency alike. So I wanted to keep it very, very simple and, and, as, and unobtrusive, as unobtrusive as possible. So you're right, I did actually just say, hey, why, why don't we just get rid of these um, other buttons, these other call to actions that take consumers away from where we really want them to go? Just get rid of them, let's do a simple A-B test and see what happens. So really, the, what, what the goal here was, you really reduced the friction, right, mm -hmm. of the email and, yep. and made, made sure that you're presenting customers with that one clear primary call to action. Right. Um, so that way they, there was no distraction. And uh, it did, in fact, actually uh, produce a 42% increase in the click-through rate. Um, again, it, it's, it's a lift. It's not a huge lift, but I think the impact of it is, is more important. Right. Um, and and it, you know, it, it did multiple things. For one, you, know, you did subtle changes to an email. And it, you know, for the change that you did, which was really minor, Really, a great result, 42% increase. Um, but you, 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 learned, you learned a few learnings, as you can see here, so a single objective. Um, but I think what's important to, to notice is that you were already segmenting based on segments, and that actually did work throughout all the segments. So you have all those learnings, and, uh, and you know, that was not the last test that you ran, right? No, it wasn't. And, this, and, and again, this test really, the results were, were, were fine. Um, I, I was really gambling on the fact that it was going to produce some positive results going into it. But the intent here was really just to kind of 
introduce the marketing managers and the agencies alike to this concept of testing, just getting them off of this, that single-threaded approach. And so that, like Ben said, the, the results speak for themselves. They were great. Um, but, it, but that actually kick-started a flurry of, of this testing culture, if you will, uh, not only with the Whirlpool brand, but all the brands within the Whirlpool portfolio.